a long time ago, longer than I care to remember, I had to learn a bunch of R&B songs for a band. Little did I know that those songs and licks were going to transform my whole sound and approach to guitar, both rhythm and lead, and it'll work for you too. Way back when I was 20, I auditioned for what turned out to be my first real working band. It was a Motown band. We played mostly soul and R&B songs. After the second song of the audition, the singer turned to me and said, if you play another one of those big chords, it's over. Don't come back. So I muddled through the rest of the audition, muting most of the strings to get a smaller sound, and I just managed the pass. But I knew I was lucky. I knew I had my work cut out for me, and I had to learn some actual guitar parts from real R&B songs and not just fake it. So I learned a few songs on the set list, like this one. And this one. And of course, this one. But soon a pattern started to emerge. These players were playing little parts that didn't step on other musicians, and yet they still stood out somehow. They played little chords and little lead lines, kind of like both rhythm and lead at the same time. There were a few players who really stood out, players like Curtis Mayfield, Joe Messina, Cornell Dupree, but one of the kings of that era was Steve Cropper of Stax Records, the guy who created all those riffs that I played earlier. He had a style that blended R&B type riffs with bluesy single notes, and he influenced contemporaries like Hendrix, Clapton, and Keith Richards, and even players like Prince. But to me, he was a huge influence because he introduced me to two of my favorite weapons on the guitar, triads and their blood brothers, double stops. But even more importantly, he gave great examples of playing with others to leave space for everybody so that the whole band sounds better. Let's cover this through a famous example of his. Here's how an ordinary guitarist would play it. Now, here's how Steve Cropper played it. Certainly, what Steve Cropper did with Soul Man was way more memorable than what an ordinary guitarist would do. But how did he come up with it, and how can you use it in your play? The chords to it are G, F, B flat, C and D. Now let's take this little D chord that we all know and love, this open D. And we'll note that the root of the chord is on the B string, third fret. Now, if we map this out and use the same shape and write out all the chords, a G, F, B flat, C, and D, we get this. Now, simply take out all the notes on the B string. Don't play them. Just play the G string and the E string. And voila, Soul Man. But there's even more. Let's check out the main riff, because the meat of what you can learn is really from that. So here's the lick. And it's played on the first three strings, so that thins out the sound. And again, it's triads to the rescue. One cool thing is that that's played over a single chord, a G. But how much cooler is that riff than this? It's a lot cooler. But here's the real kicker, the real thing that you should take away from this. One thing you can notice about this riff is it's got a sparse part and a busy part. Guess when the busy part's played? It's when the singer isn't singing. Check it out. Coming at ya on a dusty road. He lets the singer star. 
So simple and yet so effective. That's Steve Cropper. Hey, if you want to learn more about using triads, there's a link in the description for a free triad roadmap. So click that link in the description and I'll see you on down the road.